Looking, talking to you or talking to camera? Either or, didn't matter. Right, okay. Well, Jamie, how you getting on, Paul? I haven't seen you oh, for a while. I haven't been on the circuit in a while, first show in a year. Uh, not a bad way of doing it, like. Uh, really. Due to be back in Belfast well, after 18 months, is it, since we last had it? Yeah, I'm, yep. And a change of venue. Uh, quite earlier on, but good way to ease in. And tonight we can see that if your camera was to turn around, the house is fairly packed. Um, and it's good to see some new faces here from a lot of the stories that are now popping yeah. up around the place. Absolutely. Since we last spoke, there's been a, <laughs> oh, a, uh, bit, of a, a, a bit of an explosion of whiskey. There, there has been. been. There has been. So, how's things on at the Hinch? How are you getting on? Yeah, not bad. Uh, we've been quiet for a while. Uh, if you look behind me, there might be a slight rebrand that'll be coming uh, early 2024, which I've been happy enough to be working on in the background, sleeping giant at the best way. But. Uh, you know, Northern Ireland going strong now anyway, uh, but the international market is the one that we're fairly succeeding at. Yeah. Uh, just went into our 39th, 40th market there. Wow. Um, USA really taking on for us. Uh, some good news out of Hong Kong. We've now surpassed Teeling with our five-year-old as the main pouring whiskey in Hong Kong, thanks to our brand work, uh, our distributors right. over there. So hopefully we sneak each up out there to do a wee bit of something or two. Oh, but lovely. We'll see how the budget goes. Uh, well, they yeah. have a big budget down there. They're a big place. <laughs> Oh, people think that, but you know what? It's not the biggest in the world. Terry, yeah. You know Terry, he's, you know what he's like. <laughs> he's got his other company to run at the minute as well. So. Oh yes, he's, I just started back in the printing game here. Yeah, yeah, back in the printing packaging. Uh, makes my life a lot easier as well. Um, all of our labels are now becoming biodegradable, recyclable material, which will do do the world a good for us as well with the way the rest of the world's going. Well, that's, uh, that's why you have to please Greta Thunberg these days. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were going to get political this time in the afternoon. No, no, no. I haven't even had a whiskey yet. No, no, I just don't want her coming outside but, my house or anything no, like that, you know. But all jokes aside, uh, there's a reason to be said for it, you know. Yeah, there is. Uh, for ourselves, we're taking it fairly serious with Terry's other company. Uh, labels is the first port of call, and then the second port of call is our bottle. Doing a bit of doing a bit of work on it on the lightweightening project. Just uh, uh, footprint around the world, carbon footprint, um, everybody's attention on it. So let's well, the get ahead of the it, curve. The thing about it is it's actually just being pragmatic because... Yeah. Less weight, less cost as well. You know, and, and Listen, this is a no-brainer for penny, pennies in mind of pounds at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, exactly. But for us, it's like the big boys do it. So why can't the smaller ones do it? Um, you know, secondary packaging, all that there has a big call, and it'll probably be the smaller boys that will lead the way at the end of the day. Uh, the big boys have a risk to take, so we'll see how it goes. Easy, easier to turn a, a rowing boat than a Titanic. You know? <laughs> but well, l- listen, sorry. what uh, whiskey wise? Yeah. What? what uh, What's your best selling thing at the minute? What's about, what's, what's it, the honestly, it, it's market depend, but the, the two volume drivers for us are the small batch and the five year old, you know, going really well in Tesco's and Sainsbury's in Northern Ireland. But the outlier that we're finding around the world is everybody's gravitating towards the peated malt. You know, everybody goes Irish whiskey peated malt. You're like, yeah, now there's a number of us that now do it. You know, we were lucky enough to have that four years ago when the world was going Irish whiskey peated, only no Connemara. Yeah. So, you know, that's been a big part in our stuff. And if you speak to William at the distillery, his campaigns, he's doing it six months of the year. However, if he could do it 12 months of the year, he would. I'd be honest. But the first time I tasted Hinch Pete, it, I was shocked how much yeah. peat there was in it. And it, it, it comes it's, boom like yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a smoky. It's a, it's a great transition. Uh, if you would have been standing here earlier, there's quite a number of people uh, that are going, I don't like peated whiskey and you're like listen give me a minute we'll, we'll ease you into it and they're coming back uh, just people that were here before yourselves were going I'm now back to try it again because half an hour when you took the time to speak to me about it you broke down those barriers of conception to go that it is just medicinal TCP you know there's a lot more to it once you get past there that is. smoke uh, and I think the thing about it is it's the same as a lot of stuff people try one and think they all yeah. taste kind of the same and it's not it's not like well, that, that you that's know. the reason why we're standing here what is it there's 250 300 whiskies potentially here yeah and if you don't like something you move on to another stand at the end of the day we want everybody drinking Irish whiskey so if somebody comes here and doesn't like something I'm hoping that they go to somewhere else try something and then they tell their friend actually you know Hint's 10 year old sherry is for you. At yeah. the end of the day, we were going to big everybody up in here, um, and that's what we want to do. Yeah. Grow the word of Irish, Irish whiskey. Every, everybody wants everybody else to yeah. succeed as well. That's, that's the thing I really, really like about Irish whiskey. I really do. But the, I mean, you're, you're Pete. Um, I just found that, that it's. It's easy drinking. It's a very. It's, it's, it's very heavily Pete. It's a big whack of Pete, but it's not like most Pete whiskies. It's just not. That, and let's be honest, that comes down to the late Brian Watts thing at GND, who has done some seriously good stuff. When we approached him and asked him for a painted whiskey, you know, it's over there. That's what he came out with. Um, 
and that's credit to him. Now, we're really lucky in our distillery. You have William, who lives painted through and through, and it will play a big part. You know, that is through double distill painted and triple distill painted, depending on the campaign. We're not going to tie ourselves to one thing. Um, but that's what we know for single malts, and a big part of it will be yeah. the beta malt at the end of the day um, for it. But that one, and then the, the other one you just asked, like, you know, I can't keep enough of this, the Craft and Cast Imperial Stout. And that comes down to the beer with white water. A 10% Imperial Stout is a rocket fuel. But, you know, we had batch one two and a half years ago, uh, where it was a 12% beer and 43% whiskey. Done a bit of work on it. We brought the whiskey up to 46.5%. We brought the beer down to 10% find it a sweet spot you know um, 2,000 bottles of it released in May and we, you know we just can't keep a hold of it you know I think that's the most bottles I've used down below the counter here uh, so when the manager sees how many we went through we'll probably be in trouble <laughs> a few questions we asked tell, tell me this so is there any more special releases down the line uh, I'm not going to shoot in camera but if you look where my foot is there is a new release happening on the 10th of November that we had a few people give us the password today to try it just as an alert to it all we're going to say is we're one of a few distilleries in the island of Ireland that I can see using that wine cask uh, and a few Scottish distilleries using it as well. So uh, stay tuned to the 10th of November as the way I say. And when we go off mic, I might let you try it. So where are you, where are you off to next? Honestly, <laughs> uh, I, I, honestly, I'm at the distillery quite a bit now. I've done my travelling for four years and it was fun while doing it. Um, but my head's firmly down at the distillery. Behind us, we've got this whole rebrand happening in January, February. Um, being a labour of love for me for the past year um, and I can't fault it but ready to take it to the world um, and that may see me travelling again so keep an eye, uh, on, keep an eye on Twitter and Instagram clock, clock really up there up. miles again listen Jamie <laughs> great to talk to you again buddy I'll speak to you soon appreciate it cheers you got